All right, so uh, welcome to uh, lesson two of Enhanced Electric Power Quality and Reliability. Um, this lesson is going to be about telemetry, and uh, I'm going to start out with the cheesiest thing I could possibly do here and uh, tell you that uh, telemetry is based on two Greek words, uh, tele, which means remote, and metron, which means measurement. Uh, so remote measurement, we, uh, we talked in the last lesson about the drivers, um, you know, the motivations for implementing smart grid technology um, in, in modern electric systems. And uh, everything we talked about pretty much uh, requires that we be able to collect data from all over an electric grid and, uh, you know, use it to operate the grid more efficiently, um, use it to collect historical data so that we can perform uh, engineering analysis on the, on the system, troubleshoot problems. Um, as I mentioned in the last lecture, uh, a lot of these problems really haven't existed for very long, and so they're very active areas of um, research and study, and uh, we're still looking for good ways to tackle some of these issues. So uh, being able to make these remote measurements is pretty much critical to the, the entire concept of the smart grid. Um, and uh, well, let's just go on to the next one. So, uh, you know, talking about the smart grid, I'm, I'm going all over the place here. Uh, go, talking about the smart grid, you know, the very concept of it requires that we know in detail what's happening in all parts of the network. Um, these networks tend to be enormous. Um, here in Jacksonville, where I live, uh, the electric grid is, or the the service area is about 900 square miles. So uh, you know, and that that's really not that big uh, compared to a lot of the uh, electric operators um, in the country. Um, the California ISO, which uh, controls the um, electric distribution in, in quite a bit of California, uh, covers most of California. So, you know, we're talking about um, taking these measurements over, over vast areas. And, uh, of course, we need to make the detailed measurements of the physical phenomenon and communicate them to other parts of the grid, thus telemetry. So uh, that's what we're going to be talking about. Um, there's a lot of practical concerns that arise uh, when you start talking about telemetry and making these measurements. Uh, so here we are. We're talking about our electric grid again. This is the slide that you saw in the last uh, in the last uh, lecture. And uh, so you know, we, as an electric grid operator, uh, you're going to want to know what's going on um, at the power plant. So you're going to be collecting some information from the power plants. Uh, some feedback from them of what they're generating, what they're capable of generating, um, you know, because that's going to vary. There's going to be times when the plant's going to have problems, and so maybe it's a, you know, it's a plant that's normally capable of producing 1,300 megawatts, and, you know, for a period of time it can only make 900 megawatts because maybe a, a boiler feed water pump is out or something like that, and so they're going to be load limited. Um, or maybe they're up against an environmental constraint, and so they, you know, they they can only operate at half load for a while because they're they're getting ready to exceed some sort of an emissions limit. Um, also, you know, just from grid stability, uh, like I said, we've got these uh, we've got these renewable energy sources uh, down here at the bottom, and uh, you know they're inputting power into the grid. Uh, you know, on their own schedule, uh, at their own rate, and so it's very important for me to know what's going on there. And because we're plugging these in in parts of the grid that typically, you know, normally haven't been used to supply power, uh, we're changing our grid topology, and so we don't necessarily know what's going on all the time, um, and we need to collect data so that we can do analysis. So, uh, talking about the measurement portion of this, um, you know, in the case of the smart grid, uh, we're going to be making measurements r related to the condition of the grid. So we're going to want to know things like the voltages in, in various parts of the grid. We want to know about the current flow, uh, power flows and power consumption. Um, frequency is, is very important. Here in the United States, we, uh, we generate power at 60 hertz. So our AC power cycles at 60 times a second. And uh, that frequency needs to be pretty stable. Um, because there's a lot of equipment that runs on the grid, you know, clocks and things like that, that rely on that, uh, 
that uh, frequency being stable, um, being exactly 60 hertz and not 59 and a half hertz or 61 hertz. Uh, phase angles. Um, you know, we, we haven't talked about this, and, and you may or may not have enough of an electrical background to understand what I'm saying here, but uh, there's different types of loads. So we have things like motors and uh, things like that that, that generate uh, what we call inductive loads, and uh, that can cause the phase between the current and the voltage to vary. Uh, capacitive loads also change that, and so uh, we're going to want to measure the phase angles and see how those are varying. Um, how you know how far apart they're getting um, also we, we might want to measure the the phases in different parts of the grid and we'll talk a little bit about synchrophaser measurement but these are very high speed measurements that are taken um, that give us a, an indication of the stability of the electric grid uh, so phase angles one of them and then there's things that you wouldn't necessarily think about as normally being uh, electric related but you know, might be related to the equipment that is uh, operating. So, you know, if you've got tra a transformer out in a, at a substation, uh, monitoring the temperature for that might be an important measure for you, um, because as the transformer becomes overloaded, it might be it might tend to overheat. And so, if you're keeping track of the temperature, you can uh, have a pretty good idea of of, of how your transformer is operating. So there's all sorts of different measurements. These are just some examples, and we'll be talking in, in, in a future lesson about more in depth about some of these things. But just to give you an idea, some of the things that we might want to measure. Um, when we talk about taking these measurements, though, there's lots of practical concerns because there's not just the measurement. You know, if I if I take a reading and I say it's 120 volts. Um, you know, we, we, we've got this electric grid, like I, I talked about here in, in, in Jacksonville, 900 square miles. And so over the course, or over this 900 square mile region, I might have, might very literally have hundreds of thousands to even millions of measurements that are being taken. So uh, one of the practical concerns that comes out is how do I find the specific measurement that I, that I want? Um, you know, how do I find the exact voltage that I'm looking for, or how do I find the temperature of the transformer that I'm concerned with? And so, how do we identify these measurements and catalog these measurements becomes pretty important. And uh, it's a concern that, that, you know, something that we have to address. Um, of course, we have the value, the value that you're taking. So, you're taking this reading, you're getting a value back. Um, when was it taken? So this value that I get, let's say I look at a reading on a screen and it says 120 volts. Well, knowing how recent that reading is is important because if it was it's, if it's 120 volts right now, that's different than say if I see the reading and I know that it, it was 120 volts five minutes ago. So how often these readings are taken and when it was taken becomes a, an important thing that I need to keep track of. Um, also, we're you know we're we're talking about measurements, and so the units become the engineering units become important. Is it volts? Is it kilovolts? Is it millivolts? Is it degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius? So, what are the units of, of that measurement? Um, what took the measurement? So, there's another thing. If I go and I look at at a, at a measurement on a screen, and it doesn't look right, well, then I have to start thinking about well, why doesn't it look right, and what are the different things that could be going wrong. Um, so I, I need to know, you know, given a certain measurement, I need to know what took the measurement, what specific piece of equipment or what, you know, what manufacturer and model number was it and all of that. So all that information, this, this data about the values becomes important. This is metadata about the, my data. So uh, some of the other things that come, you know, come along is how do I move the measurements, you know, from, from, from the source to multiple destinations? So you know, I've got a reading someplace off in my 900 square mile electric grid or larger grid, and I need to move it back to a control room or some sort of facility where things are being run. And uh, the practical concerns about that, how do I, you know, how do I take that measurement and get it someplace uh, accurately and reliably, and how do I know that, it, that, it, that it, when it gets there that it's good information uh, that becomes another another concern that we need to address, and so of course you know is, is the information that I'm receiving reliable? So 
you know, if I'm if I'm receiving a, a a voltage and it says minus three volts or something like that, and I know it should be 120 volts. Um, I need to know some sort of way, you know, if the equipment is able to determine that there's been a malfunction or something, it needs to to flag that data as being questionable, so that when I look at it, I know, okay, I received this reading, but I know that there's probably something wrong with it. So all of these different things become um, it becomes items of concern for us and things that we need to think about as we're engineering these large systems.